Hi, this is Alison Hall and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 136 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of a heavily calcified osteal circumflex CTO that also involved bifurcation atherectomy. The patient was an elderly woman with previous bypass. She had a lima to LAD, sequential vein graft to diagonal and obtuse marginal, and an occluded, non occluded vein graft to the right coronary artery. She came in with a non STEMI EF of 50 to 55%. She underwent emergent cath because of hypotension respiratory failure and was found to have an occlusion of the circumflex that was not there before. And there was relatively poor flow retrograde via a diseased saphenous vein graft. The patient was intubated, a balloon pump was placed, and she was subsequently referred for PCI of the native circumflex using impella support. We left the balloon pump in place and then used the other axis, the left side, to insert the impella. The wire here of the micropuncture wire is going into the lateral circumflex iliac, something critical to find soon, otherwise if equipment is advanced, this will likely lead to significant perforation. A pigtail was inserted into the left ventricle, through which um, we were able to insert the impella device. We needed two exercises for performing the CTO PCI. So one of them was the impella, and the other one was the right common femoral artery. And we decided to insert a sheath through the impella sheath so that we can perform PCI through the same sheath. This is the SIP technique that was um, uh, created by Dr. Jason Walmuth, and it's a very nice technique to minimize the need for arterial access. Essentially, the impella sheath is punctured next to the impella device which is lower profile in its body than it is the impella sheath. Then O35 wire is inserted, and then a 7 French 45 centimeter long pinnacle destination sheath is inserted next to the impella. It is critical at this stage to ensure that the impella sheath is not moving to avoid LV issues such as perforation. So here we are now, we do have the impella in place. We do have two guides, both through femoral axis, one of them going through the impella sheath. One guide is into the vein graft that goes to diagonal and to M. There is the significant lesion that doesn't allow good perfusion of the circumflex. And this is the osteal circumflex CTO with severe calcification. We have a blunt proximal cap, severe calcification, short length of the CTO, and good caliber distal vessel, which is filling through the sequential SVG. Our plan here was to try undergrade escalation first, and if that did not work, to go retrograde through the SVG. Undergrading, undergrade wiring attempts failed, despite using an angulated microcatheter, and uh, we ended up going retrograde with a turnpike LP. However, despite using multiple guide wires, including a Gladius Mongo, Pilot 200, Gaia 3rd, Hornet 14, and Astato 20, the distal cap was impenetrable due to significant calcification. What to do next? Uh, we did try a cutting balloon into the left main to modify the plaque, but we were still unable to cross. We made some more undergrade crossing attempts. These are undergrade attempts using a twin pass dual lumen microcatheter, but unfortunately we were not able to cross once again. This was done simultaneously with one operator working on the undergrade direction and a second operator working through the retrograde direction. This is one way to optimize the efficiency of the procedure if two operators are available in the same case. And then after multiple attempts and multiple guide wires, a Pilot 200 wire did cross into the left main as confirmed by an IVUS we had placed into the left main. You can see here jumping coming into the left main. However, we could not advance the retrograde microcatheter. We did more balloon inflations in the left main, and um, uh, we were able to further advance the retrograde wire. However, we could not cross with the retrograde microcatheter. And then uh, during those attempts, we actually lost everything. The guide on the graft came out and we lost everything. So we started um, again, we re-engaged, 
and this time we actually used a guide extension, a six frame strap liner down the SPG for better support. Once again, we were able to advance the Pilot 200 into the left main, but the retrograde Corsair would not cross. So what we did is we used a dilation with a 1.0 millimeter subfire pro balloon advanced through the Saffinus rain graft. And after doing that, we were able to advance a teleport microcatheter into the left main and then externalize an R350 guide wire. Serial inflations were done with some improvement. However, the lesion remained fairly undilatable. We would not advance an IVUS over it and we were concerned that placing a stand would lead to significant underexpansion. Therefore, further lesion preparation was needed. But the challenge here is we had a wire into the LAD and we did not want to compromise the LAD because during the case when we had inflations in the LAD, we actually had uh, uh, issues with hemodynamics and the impeller keeping, kicking in and having essentially a flat uh, pressure line. One way to do this is to use two guides and use a guide extension to protect the wire in one vessel and perform a therectomy in the other vessel. The other option is to use the guide extension over the wire that is used for a therectomy in order to protect the secondary wire into the side branch. What we did in this case is to actually insert a fine cross microcatheter over the LAD wire to protect the LAD wire. We then did multiple orbital atherectomy runs into the circumflex and while we were doing that we were changing the position of the fine cross to minimize injury at the same location of the fine cross microcatheter. So the goal here was to use the mine cross to protect the LAD wire while allowing us at the same time to atherectomize the circumflex. And that actually worked we were able to nicely expand our balloons and uh, place a drag eluting stand from the left main into the circumflex with nice expansion and excellent flow. There was need for pressures, therefore the impeller was left in. The nice thing about using the single axis technique is we can actually remove the impeller sheath holding the impeller in place without having a bleeding and maintaining hemostasis through the impeller. We then examined the fine cross microcatheter which he had used to protect the LED wire and interestingly enough there was actually a hole on the fine cross and this is how it looks under higher magnification. This is the fine cross and this is the fine cross further down. There's some uh, scuffing but not too bad. However, you go further down there is actually the area of perforation despite the fine cross having a uh, metal coil, the actual metal was destroyed and there was a hole into the fine cross. And that demonstrates the potential risks of using a microcatheter to protect the guide wire during atherectomy. The atherectomy can actually damage the microcatheter and potentially lead to material embolization or even worse, could lead to fracture of the microcatheter and distal embolization. The patient returned a few days later for impeller removal. However, she decompensated after the impeller was removed. This was a challenging situation where we actually had to insert emergently an impeller, but then the impeller uh, coiled into itself and was lost position from the left main, which was an emergency in this case. But what was done is the impeller was pulled back and then re-advanced. And fortunately, we were able to advance it into the left ventricle without needing to repeat the process of pigtail to get into the left ventricle. So sometimes the impeller, by ad being advanced, can actually enter directly into the LV without the need of a se separate pigtail catheter to get wire access. The patient had subsequently emergency mitral clip because of severe mitral regurgitation, had a small embolic CVA, and was subsequently discharged to transitional care after being stabilized. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is the need for hemodynamic support for high-risk patients. This was a patient with very unstable hemodynamics in whom hemodynamic support made the procedure feasible. Second is the use of the single access technique for performing uh, PCI with impeller guidance. This is particularly useful for CTO intervention where two accesses are needed by using the 
access to the impeller seat, we can place a seven front seat and obviate the need for getting a radial or other access. In cases of heavy calcification, a therectomy can provide the solution by allowing stent uh, delivery and expansion and sure did the work in our case. When the atherectomy is on a bifurcation with an important side branch, it is probably best to remove the side branch wire because trying to protect it using microcatheter as done in this case um, seems to have problems with damage of the microcatheter. And then lastly, if impeller position is lost, it is often possible to regain position by advancing the impeller into the left ventricle without a wire as occurred in this case. Thank you.